This is a hexapod. It's a type of robot with six legs that can move independently. Now, a few months ago, I came up with the idea of making my own hexapod. So in this video, I'm going to show you how I designed and built one from start to finish. And the process ended up being much more difficult than I expected. Say we have a four-legged robot where each of the legs are making contact with the ground. If a border is drawn around the contact points, we're left with an area called the support polygon. What's special about this area is that as long as the robot's center of mass stays above it, the robot is statically stable. Perfectly balanced. But what happens if we lift one of the legs into the air? With only three feet on the ground, the rectangle becomes a much smaller triangle. And since the center of mass is now outside of the stable area, the robot would immediately fall over. The smaller the support polygon, the less stable the robot. The reason why this is important is because if we look at a hexapod, which is six legs, there are a lot more ground contact points. So when some of them are removed, such as when walking, there's a less dramatic effect on the stability of the robot. Which means in theory it should be a lot easier to make a stable hexapod. Alright, so the first objective is to figure out a design for the robot. After testing out a few different ideas, this is what I came up with. Each leg has three joints that are connected together using some 3D printed pieces, which are then connected to the base of the robot. Since there are six legs, I'm going to need 18 motors in total. So to keep the cost down, I'm using these cheap servos I found online. And to control the hexapod, I'm using an Arduino Mega. With 54 digital pins, we can control the 18 servos with plenty of room spare. Next, it's time to print off some of the parts and start putting the motors inside their respective housing pieces. These components will make up the three leg joints once they're attached together. But before that, I'm going to write some quick test code to make sure that the motors are working correctly. Once that's done, it's time to plug in the Arduino, upload everything and hook up a power supply. And as expected, all of the motors move smoothly through their entire range of motion. Although the wiring is starting to get a bit messy, which could pose problems later. Anyways, I went ahead and did some more 3D printing. This is the hip joint, which is the last piece I needed for the leg assembly. So after screwing in the servo horns to each motor, I can finally attach all the components together. And there we have it, the first step towards making the x is complete. I'm quite happy with how rigid each of the joints are, since this should mean that supporting the weight of the full robot won't be a problem later. But just to be on the safe side, I made the simple two-part base frame, which when combined with the leg provides a strong but lightweight connection. With everything finished, we can now see that joint one rotates around the z-axis, while joint two, and joint 3 allow for rotation around the x-axis. Now setting the angle of these joints individually is simple, but unless these angles are coordinated together, placing the end of the leg at a desired point isn't possible. To achieve this, we need to solve the inverse kinematics problem for the hexapod leg. Without getting into too much detail, this involves using trigonometry to find a set of equations for the joint angles. These equations can then be put into code, and after a bit of trial and error, we can move the leg relatively accurately between two points. And with some slight modifications to make the leg follow a set of points on a curve, we're left with something that resembles a walking cycle. It's not perfect yet, but it's enough to move on to making the rest of the legs. Now at this point in the project, I realized there's a ton of servos and connecting them straight to the Arduino would end up being a massive pain. So to save myself from that headache, I'm using this sensor shield I found online. And once placed on top of the Arduino, the rest of the process becomes a lot easier. To 
finish off the build, I've made this elevated platform to make the Arduino on top. Now it's time for testing. First I got all the legs moving randomly, and within a few days I had the hexapod walking. Well, sort of. You see, there's two main problems. Mounting the Arduino at the top of the robot means the cables are left exposed. And I also forgot to factor in where the battery system should go. So I made these mounting posts that attach to the base and allowed the Arduino to be placed on the underside of the robot. It's not perfect and has to be held together using zip ties, but it does mean that the cables are a lot more manageable. And since I plan on using a 3S LiPo battery for power, I've got this butt converter to step the voltage down to 5 volts. It's mounted using this new top plate I've designed. So here's what the final hexapod looks like. I have to admit, it's turned out a lot better than I expected. But the real test will be seeing how it performs during testing.